Welcome back to Twisted Stitches. My name is Tammy. How's everybody doing? It is Friday and it is time for my podcast that I usually do once a week. I know I missed last week, guys. I am so very sorry. Last week I was invited out for a friend's birthday party and next thing I know the time got away from me. So I decided that I would just wait until this Friday to talk to you guys. Hope you guys are okay with that. I didn't mean to miss. And so this week, because last week I was going to show you one finished object. Um, and then let's see, what else did I have going on last week? I didn't have as much stuff going on either last week. So maybe it's a good thing that I kind of skipped a week. I got a few things done and I have actually two finished objects this week. And I started a new project one that I've been saying I'm going to be starting and um, I will be starting another project pretty soon. So stay tuned. We have whips, we have finished objects, and I have a few acquisitions that I made. Nothing major, nothing major, just a few, a couple acquisitions that I'd like to share with you guys. Plus I have um, a question that maybe you guys can help me out with that I am not sure of. So let's start with what should we start with finished objects okay now uh last week this was my finished object for last week and i wanted to show it because i did post this on my facebook group i believe and i'm not sure anywhere else now i need to take a better picture because I took the picture like on my bed and my lighting in my bedroom is like, I don't know, it's yellow or something. And every time I take a picture in my bedroom, it just looks all yellowish and stuff. And I really want to take this outside and I keep saying I'm going to do it <laughs> and I just don't get out there and do it. But anyway, so my first finished object that was from last week, this is the Closet UFO Challenge from Natalie at Natalie's Closet. So I have this blanket that I was working on it is finished it was finished last week and it came out so nice and squishy guys this thing you know at night when you get all chilly and everything like that this was made with the wool ease thick and quick and it is heavy here this is this is the width of it it's not very wide. I can't get back any further. Can I get back any further? Let me see. So this is like the width. Can you guys see that? And then the length is like I made it a lot longer. See, I made it uh, like almost my entire wingspan. Now, when I put it on, I usually just like to cover up my arms and stuff. It just feels really good. It's like a nice weighted blanket on you but it doesn't make my feet hot. <laughs> Does that make sense? So it is so nice and squishy. And usually I'm fighting with my dogs. Well, my one dog, Peaches, the one that's the poodle that's always cold. Usually I wake up and I find this mostly off of me and she's wrapped up in it all curled up because it does feel good though. It feels so nice when it's chilly out night or you just got the chills or something and you just want to feels something heavy on you. Oh, this feels so nice. It is, is really nice. I highly recommend this particular pattern with this yarn. I am very surprised. I am not a super bulky fan. I usually, I live in Florida guys. So as much as I love this in the summertime, it's probably gonna get packed up and stored away. I'll probably give it a wash and I'll probably put it in one of those big bags and it's gonna get stored away and I'm not gonna see it for seven, almost eight months. And then I gotta remember that I made it. So you guys are gonna have to remind me. And then when it gets chilly again, I pull it out. Hence the problem with the Florida problems, right? <laughs> so anyway, I highly recommend, I used up, nine, yes, nine skeins of the Woolies Thick and Quick, just the regular size ones, the ones that have like 90 yards on it or something like that for this size blanket. And I'll tell you what, if you live in the Northern States, 
oh, you know what? Your your grandkids or your kids would love this. I, I, I guarantee you will love this. So I highly recommend it. Um, I will leave the pattern link in my description box for you guys um, so you can easily get to it. It's a free pattern on Lion Brian. Um, it did call for a larger hook size and I didn't have that hook size. So I had the largest hook size I had was my Clover P slash Q, I think it is, um, the blue one. I don't have it right here with me, but anyway, so that's what I made this out of. It actually called for like a, I think it's a 35 millimeter hook. I'll have to, you know, it, the, like I said, the, 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 bleh, the pattern will be in the description box and it tells you what size hook they were. It was like made with what was called a lion brand speed hook. I don't know. So what I what you do have to do though, if you don't have one of those ginormous hooks and you want your blanket to be longer or wider, you do have to figure out the stitch count. I believe that I figured out the stitch count to be in multiples of eight. And then you had to add on four for the chain. What I will do is I will see if I can find my notes. I feel I'm so unprepared. I'm sorry, guys. So um, I'll see if I can find my notes. And in the description box, it I will leave that in there for you if you need it. Anyway, um, it's basic. It's a basic shell stitch pattern. So if you have like a crochet book or look up shell stitch um, on Google, if you Google crochet if you Google shell stitch, crochet shell stitch, it'll come up and it'll give you the multiples or it'll give you a pattern, something like that. But um, the pattern had stated that it was going to be 36 inches wide following their pattern completely. And it didn't give you the multiples. It just told you to chain blah mount and then work into the fourth chain of the hook yada yada so like i said i had to do some math to figure it out and i thought i knew what the multiples were and i just slipped my head like that guys so like i said i will leave the multiples if i find it i will leave it in my description box so if you're in the same situation where you don't have one of those ginormous hooks but you do happen to have seven, eight, or nine-ish balls of woolies and you want to make one of these, highly recommend. I, and it moved quickly. It really did. I finished, if you remember, I had started out with making another, pro this was, you know, a project that was in my closet that I started last year and never finished it. And um, originally I was doing like the lemon peel stitch and I had only like a very small section done and I had already, when I frogged it, and I frogged this complete project, I had already put in like five or six skeins of the woolies already. And I only had a very short, and I'm thinking to myself now, I would have never finished this blanket with, with what I already had in there. I would have never had enough yarn because I only had 15 skeins to begin with. And I used up what I said, eight or nine, something like that for this one. Um, yeah, so if you happen to have some, like I said, I'm just, I'm surprised that I am so much in love with this blanket. I didn't think that I would want a blanket that would be so heavy, but I am, I surprised, surprisingly, I like the feel of the weight of this. As a matter of fact, right now, I feel so comfy cozy, I don't want to let go of this. But alas, I do need to let go. Oh, <sighs> till later. <laughs> so anyway, this is my first finished object and yay. And thank you, Natalie, for helping me get off my butt and getting this done. If you guys were a part of the UFO challenge, let me know, did you guys, what did you guys do? What did you guys uh, get done? Uh, let me know in the comments section. I'm dying to know. Okay, my second finished object of this week. <gasps> And I am not putting it on because I don't like to put this on. Somebody who knows Tom knows that I crochet or make things or whatever. And she asked me to make her 
a hat, but she wanted one of those messy beanie hats or ponytail hats, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so I did, and she wanted it, of course, like, I mean, you guys will probably know, she wanted it black with some gold in it because her husband is part of the uh, motorcycle group that their colors use black and gold. So I was kind of hoping that she was going to want more girl colors or something that I could have used, maybe some beautiful neutrals or something and made a pop of another color or something, but no, she wanted the black and gold. So that's what I have to show you. I have this um, messy bun beanie that I did. This pattern is called the Katniss pattern. K-A-T-N-I-S-S. -S. I think that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, I really, I started looking up, you know, um, messy bun crochet beanies. And yes, I looked for the free ones. I googled free crochet pattern, messy buns, blah, blah, blah. And uh, several came up, a few that I thought were like really cute. A couple that started from the top and went around an elastic, you know, like a hair tie, and then worked its way down. Um, but I, I started thinking about making one in that way. What I thought about and what kind of struck me was, what happens if that elastic breaks? Does the hat mess up? Um, can you still really use it? Is it like, this where it would just be, you know, whatever's left of your, um, your chains or whatever, or your ending or beginning chains or something like that, would, would it still be usable? A and I couldn't find an answer and I, I didn't have a lot of time to do a ton of research. I needed to get this done this week, you know, and so, um, I don't know. Do you guys know? I have a question out there for you guys because I don't know. And if I ever make another one, I'd like to make it top down because y'all know crocheting top down beanies is a lot faster than crocheting, you know, your little ribbed looking single crochet in the back loop only type deal and then crocheting into that. You know, if you guys have ever made a beanie in this way where you started at the bottom with a ribbing like this you know this is so like time consuming more time consuming than you would think it is so if you guys have made these like messy tight bun beanies or whatever and you made it top down and you use the method where you put it over or crocheted over a hair tie let me know if a it didn't break very easily it was sturdy enough or you know, like if I get the, the, the no ouch ones, but the thicker ones, you know, I, that's what I have actually. Those are, um, I have those, I bought some like a dollar general. I have them for when I was making my granddaughter's hair scrunchies. My question is still, if the hair tie broke or breaks, can you still use it or does it mess it up or what happens? I mean, it doesn't really matter. Anyway, this pattern, like I said, is called the Katniss Messy Beanie. So this particular beanie, like I said, starts from the bottom. And because it's a free pattern, I can tell you about it. You can, you chain nine or 11 and you work your way, you single crochet your way back and you get either like eight or 10. And I did 11 to get 10 because I wanted to have enough. The other thing that I did do, which I always do, always making any kind of beanies where I start at the brim, work my way up, is the brim was made with a 4.5 millimeter hook, and then the hat was made with a 5.5 millimeter hook. I do the same thing when I am knitting a hat. When I do the brim, I go one size, one millimeter smaller in size to do the brim. And then I switch out the, the needles or the, uh, the needles and I go up a size to do the rest of the hat. So the brim is a little bit snugger, helps it stay on the head better. So that's why I do it. I don't like when, 
you, the beanies are so loose, you're kind of worried about them blowing off, you know? I mean, I've seen some beautiful handmade beanies, but they were so loose. I thought, man, if a gust of wind hits you, it looks like it's just gonna blow away. Like I said, this is cold weather problems that I'm, I haven't dealt with in a very, very long time. I don't wear hats. I do not wear hats here in Florida. It's very rare that it gets that cold where I feel the need to put on a hat. You know what, I'll be honest with you. Even growing up up north in New Jersey, when I was a kid and everyone was like, put your hat on. I was like, I hated wearing hats. I hated it. Unless I wore it like, you guys remember this? I don't, anybody who's around my age will probably remember this. You take your hat and you'd fold it up to make it real small. And then you would just put it like right here because you didn't want to mess up your feathered uh, Farrah Fawcett hair. Remember that guys? We couldn't mess up our hair. So we can only wear our hat like a beanie, like way back here. And I'm sure that was doing us some good. <laughs> anyway, um, I will insert a picture right here of the beanie. I, I have such a problem putting this on. You should have seen me trying to put my hair up, trying to put my hand in here and pull it through. I was like, oh, this is too much work. <laughs> Just too much work. But this is what she wanted. I said, do you sure you don't want some ear warmers? I was gonna, I was trying to convince her that I was gonna make like an ear warmer. I figured like maybe make a cabled ear warmer. It would be kind of cool. You know, it'd have a nice look to it, but no, she wanted this. The pattern called for a four weights and a 5.5 millimeter hook. The yarn that they used in the pattern was um, one that 100 grams was like 3.5 ounces. So what I did is I started looking around to see what was close to that many ounces for the um, same amount of grams. So what, and I wanted it to use, I wanted to use like an anti-pilling and I want, I really wanted to get some premier anti-pilling, the everyday anti-pilling yarn, cause I have used it in the past but um, Joann's didn't have any, or they had very a limited selection of it. I can't remember if I even saw it at Joann's when I went, I bought this at Joann's, the yarn for this at Joann's. And um, so I can't remember if, I just, I didn't see the anti-pilling at Joann's. Is Joann's still carrying it guys? Anyway, uh, so they had the Lion brand Excuse me, I just flung this across the room. <laughs> so they had the Lion Brand Basic Stitch Anti-Pilling and it was like on sale. I don't know. I don't know. It was two for seven dollars. So I picked up a few um, skeins of it anyway. So uh, this particular one was 3.5 ounces for 100 grams. So it had 185 yards on it and I made this Katniss beanie and I have this much left so I probably have I probably have maybe 10 yards left approximately 10 yards left so that's it used up some yarn that's for sure so you got to figure 185 so it probably used about 160 to 175 yards I don't know if it was just the pattern it has a lot of this hat has a lot of front post, back post type stitches in it. And I don't know if it's a yarn eater. I don't know. But anyway, um, this pattern had stated to stop. Of course, you know, you always got to adjust based on your tension, based on your yarn weight, based on just, you know, like everybody crochets differently. So you have to just basically, if the pattern says to do this many rows or rounds and then you put it on your head and it's like, nope, it doesn't fit. Obviously you have to do, you have to do more. So, so what I did is I made this hat to the pattern and the pattern basically, let's see if we could do this here, has you stopping right after this front post single crochet right here. And then right after you get done doing the front post single crochet in the row behind it, 
you make, you start your single crochet decreases to make the top of your hat. So after I got done doing this front post um, single crochet here where the pattern called for, I measured it and it only measured like just maybe seven inches. And I put it on my head and it like sat right here and like the, the the top of it was right here and then it sat a little too high and I was like nope it's definitely got to be made bigger so what I did at that point is instead of starting the single crochet I put another row of the double crochet then I put another row of the front post single crochet to keep it kind of in pattern I didn't want to do a full pattern repeat but I kept it kind of in pattern and then what I did is the instead of the pattern had you start out your first round doing decreases immediately i did the first round of single crochets just a f one round of single crochets no decreases then i did three rounds of the decrease uh the decrease section like it states in the uh pattern and it seemed to work out really well after that then i put it on and it looked really good well for a beanie anyway and it fit and I was able to pull my ponytail through it well you're supposed to like put your hand in like this and then you're supposed to pull your hair up in a ponytail and then grab your ponytail and then just kind of like pull this over it you know kind of like turning it inside out putting it on and then flipping it back right side in um yeah it was all right it kind of drove me nuts it was a little bit it still needs a little bit of like wear and stretching you know how it is the the stitches need to be loosened up a little tiny bit but two times it's worn and this thing will be nice and loosey-goosey you know how that goes so this long story I know so this is my second finished object of this week and I did finish this just uh Actually, today. I finished it up today. I only had a little bit left. Uh, finished it up. So that's done. So, oh, I do want to, I'm going to show you because I feel so bad. I didn't work on it this week at all, but I did work on it the week before. And I put probably, I think I put a decent amount of rows in it. Look at it. It's growing pretty nicely, guys. What do you think? I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm going to put a little more love into this this week for sure. But I do have to get another blanket done for, you, you know, you guys remember the customer that I made this corner to corner for and the christening blanket, that white blanket and stuff. I still have, I now have, well, I still have one more blanket to make her and, um, so I'm going to be starting that this week and hopefully maybe I can get it done this week. I'm thinking about just literally sitting down and just getting the blanket done and doing absolutely nothing else. What do you guys think? Does that sound like a good idea? Because it's like one of those things I just want to kind of get it done over with and be done with it. I know that sounds terrible. It's not something I'm not making it to make me happy or to give to somebody for a gift or to give to somebody for a donation or anything. It's just, I, you know, I'm discovering that I really don't enjoy crocheting or making for profit. Does that make sense? I, 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 I thought I would be all right with it, but I really, I don't know. I just, I'm just like at the point where I just, I want to make things that make me happy. And when I do donations, like I did Hat Not Hate, making those hats made me happy. Even though it was a blue hat, a blue hat, a blue hat, it still made me happy. I don't know, maybe just knowing that somebody else wants it. I don't know, it's, it's weird. It's really weird. So that's where I'm at. I don't know, guys. Maybe, maybe there's something wrong with me. But I also just want to enjoy doing the craft just for myself. I just want to do projects that make me happy or make me think or, or whatever the situation is. So that's 
kind of where I'm at right now. So that's like why I keep thinking, let me get this blanket done and just get it done with. And I want to get things off the burner and get them done so I can. I want to be working on my granddaughter's blanket, you know, and I really want to work on this. So let me show you my first whip. And this one I'm super excited about, guys. So no laughing because... Y'all know I'm a new knitter, so I know that the knitters out there, the saged knitters out there are going to look at it and you're going to find things wrong with it and you're going to probably could pick it apart. I 100% I know that, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm okay with that. So I am working with the very first color that was in. So this is how it looks all caked up. And if you guys saw the unboxing, then you would have seen it in Hank form. And <laughs> believe it or not, I am on row 26. <laughs> yeah, that is 25 rows of this habitation throw right here. This is what, this is why it's going to take me a while, guys. <laughs> Fingering weight yarn knitted is very very small when i put this when i looked and i went i'm going to be starting row 25 row 25 something like that and oh my goodness now this thing here you're gonna see i'm gonna i will point out some of my my boo-boos so i have a boo-boo right here which hopefully when it's done with maybe i can like you know fudge it a little bit and fix it and then this whole section, like from there down, the whole edge is a boo-boo. Um, this pattern uses an I-cord uh, cord edging. And I totally forgot that when you slip, well, with this pattern, every time you slip a stitch, you slip as if to purl. And I totally forgot about putting my yarn in the front as if to purl. Cause when you purl a stitch, your yarn goes in the front. When you knit, the yarn is in the back. And I was slipping, I was like going at it. Now, wait before I say I was going at it. This cast on took me, I think this finally was my sixth or seventh try I had to tear this back way I had to frog this back way too many times like I either had a mistake or well it it's still a mistake because I didn't do it right but it looks okay and I'm not ripping it back again I am not starting all over again I had decided nope now, the reason why this is a little wonky is because one row, you start with a slip as if to purl, and then your second row, you slip a stitch, uh, you knit your stitch. You don't slip a stitch. So every time, so this row here is always slipping your first stitch and I am having a little bit of like getting used to the tension that I need to make the first slipped purl stitch work well and to look okay. It just likes to grow on me and I don't know why. But as you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see here, that was my wonky one and then it got a little better. I adjusted and it got a little better. But like I said, I'm not ripping it back. I'm sure I can fudge that somehow. I'm sure. This is for me. This is not going to anybody else. This is my first major knitted project. To me, the hats that I've knitted, they were good practice, but it wasn't like, uh, it wasn't a major project. You know, knitting a hat is pretty basic and I love knitting hats. I think they're great because I feel like I'm accomplishing something. I feel like, woohoo, I did something really good, but a basic knitted hat is just a basic knitted hat. 
So, but anyway, uh, I am enjoying doing this and I cannot wait. This is something that every time I have to do something else, I just feel like this right here that I'm like, I really want to pick up my knitting and work on it, but I have to have time and I have to be in my zone because I have to concentrate on what I'm doing because the one time I was not totally concentrating and I was like, oh, I got this. I messed up and had to rip it all back. <laughs> and um, I have I have a lot of practice, guys. I need a lot of practice. So anyway, so I am super happy. I, st I was originally working this up on my my set of interchangeable, the chow goos that I got, but I was dropping stitches all over the place because I don't know, you know. So anyway, this was a set of circular. These are interchangeable circular. These are interchangeable. These are interchangeable circulars that I got for free from Knit Picks when I purchased like, I don't know, $30 worth of yarn. I got um, a Try Me set, um, the four millimeter and a 4.5 millimeter. The 4.5 um, needles are their metal ones. And then these four millimeters are their um, like wooden ones, bamboo or whatever this is. So I am, although when I'm knitting a hat, I like to use the metal cause it moves a little bit quicker with this and with the pattern and really having to concentrate, I'm enjoying using a wooden set of needles for this project. Because I am working better, the wooden ones are working better for me. I did make a couple acquisitions now. When the first acquisition I made before, <laughs> this is going to sound really funny. I started off making the blanket on these Knit Picks needles. Then I was like, well, it's a little grippy. I really would like it to be a little bit smoother. And I really miss the, the metal tips. The metal tips are really great for picking up stitches and it doesn't split the stitches, especially a nice pointy metal tip. So I put this on my Chagoos, but the Chagoos was just too slick. So me in my, I don't know what, so I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know. I don't know. But I was like, well, maybe when I go to my yarn shop, because I had to meet up with a friend, Natalie, hi, Natalie, uh, at my local yarn shop, I was like, well, maybe instead of using my chagus, cause I heard that these particular needles weren't as slick, maybe I'll pick up a set of these Haya Hayas and I will work the blanket on the Haya Hayas. So I was still having the same problem. My stitches were sliding off. It was a little too slick. These are nice needles. I like them. And these, yes, it's right now, it's not very good for me, but, um, it's a nice set of size four millimeter with a 40 inch cable, which is good for um, working magic loop. And so when I get better, I will start using these. I liked them, they were fine, um, but it was a little too slick for me. Well, it's a little more grabbier than my Chagus, but still too slick. I started dropping stitches, or I was starting to get worried about dropping stitches. And I would see like a stitch starting to slide a little too much or I pulled the tension a little too much and then the stitch started sliding and I started panicking like, I'm gonna drop a stitch. So I was just like, nope, nope, nope. So after I got this, I was like at my yarn shop and I was like, well, okay. So probably what I'll do is when I get home, I'll just put them back on these, which I did. But while I was there, I did pick up a one more set of, DPNs. So I do have a set of DPNs in Knitter's Pride. Knitter's Pride, they look just basically like these. Uh, same kind, same colors and everything. I think Knit Picks and Knitter's Pride is the same thing. As a matter of fact, you can interchange the cables with the Knit Picks and Knitter Pride, so it's probably the same thing. I like the wooden ones because I, when I'm working with DPNs, I do like to have a little bit more grip. I don't think, I don't know if I'll ever want the metal DPNs. 
I don't know. I mean, maybe if I get really good at it and I'm quick knitter, like, you know, my crochets, you know, I wouldn't, I don't like using a wooden crochet hook because for me, it's just a little too sticky. I like my, you know, my clovers and stuff like that. So anyway, I grabbed these while I was at the yarn shop because I knew definitely like these. And um, so that was, and then I grabbed a 47 inch cord interchangeable to go on here. I don't know how many stitches I'm gonna end up with um, because my minis were 20 grams instead of 10 grams. The, the, um, the pattern for the Habitat Throw used 24 10 gram minis and I have 24 20 gram minis. And so I do, I do plan on putting all of them into the throw. I want it to be a nice big throw. The lady at the yarn shop told me that the 40 inch cable will probably be fine for over a thousand stitches. But then I was thinking, well, what if I have like 1500 or something? Stitches? I don't know. I, I don't know. So I thought it ain't gonna hurt to have a bigger cable anyway. I mean, you know, magic loop, maybe the bigger cable will make it easier. I do have, that is something I want to learn how to do is to do the magic loop because I want to do the socks and I want to do it with the magic loop method. So I thought, well, so what? I'll get a 47 inch cable. I'm supporting my yarn shop. I didn't buy any yarn at the yarn shop, but I bought some stuff that I was wanting to get anyway. So I bought these three items at my yarn shop and hi Debbie. I was like, well, you know what? I want to get a set of, well, I want a five millimeter wooden knitting needle and, and see, I already have, you know, the interchangeables and stuff. And I went and I bought a 16 inch, 16 inch cable, five millimeter. Um, so these are circular knitting needles to do a hat. And I want, like I said, I'm gonna be doing a hat soon. What I went and did is I had a coupon for at Joann's. So when I got the yarn at Joann's, I used my 50% off coupon and I picked up these Clover bamboo knitting needle. And I was like, you know what? I love, love my Clover crochet hooks. So will this, be like my go-to knitting needles? I don't know. I will let you guys know. Right now, I'm pretty good with these uh, Knitter's Pride or Knit Picks ones. I'm liking the way, these are really good for a new knitter. They, like I said, they're enough, a little bit of grip helps you out a little bit. So I bought those at Joann's for 50% off. And that's what I did when I bought my clover hooks. I would wait and get my 50% off coupons and I went and bought my clover hooks that way because they never discount the hooks and needles. So you can always use your coupons at Joann's for your hooks and needles. Just some information guys. So my, so that's everything that I had to show you this week. So I did my knit, I'm working on my knitting, I know. Row 25, dudes. Row 25. Uh, oh, this is going to take me so long, guys. I I already know it. As a matter of fact, um, the reason why I know I did this part wrong was because a friend of mine, Jackie. Hi, Jackie. She, I sent her a picture. She knits. And uh, I sent her. She asked me. She's doing the habitation throw also. So she asked me how I was doing, if I had started it, and I said yes, and I sent her the picture without that part, just this little, that little section right there, and I'm like, see, I finally got the, because I was telling her I was having a problem getting that going, and uh, I finally was like, yay, I finally got it, and I sent her the picture, and she texts me back, and she's like, it's fine, but do you have your heart, or something like, do you have your heart set on doing the I chord? and blah 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 and I was like well yeah and she's like oh well just letting you know that's not the I chord and I was like oh. so I was like well can you tell me what I did wrong I I thought I was doing it just like the directions say 
And then she texts back and she said, are you, uh, she goes, I think you're, you're not slipping it pearl wise with the yarn in front. Are you? And I was like, Oh no, that's what I did wrong. That's what I did wrong. So, I mean, so that's, like I said, a knitter knows this stuff, someone with experience. And I was like, Oh crud. She goes, don't just, it's fine. I said, do you think it's okay? She's like, yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't frog it back. And I was like, so she was the one who told me to, if I wanted to do it, if I wanted to do it, she goes, it's fine. If I keep doing it the way I was doing it, it's fine. Because technically it don't look too, too bad. You know, it's, it looks okay. But I think she said this was like the garter, the way I was doing it, it was the garter something cast on, the garter edge cast on. I don't know. You knitters will probably know. I do not. Anyway, uh, so, but I wanted to do it per the uh, pattern. I really wanted to do it for the practice. So I, I didn't want to do it wrong. So yeah. So that's why it is going to be, like I said, row 25 and I have that much done. <laughs> yeah, this is going to take me I probably will have this done for next winter, but that'll be fine. That'll be fine. It'll be something to do all summer long. And you guys, will you? I hope you come back and join me with a laugh here once in a while to see how we're doing. But I do anticipate that it'll get better, it'll get easier, and it'll start looking a lot better. Just like you guys remember your first crocheted project. Do you guys remember that? I remember mine. Mine was a blanket. And when I got done with the blanket and I looked back at the first few rows, you know, my uh, first chain and working into my chain, I noticed so much wonkiness. And so m I, I had made a couple of mistakes I didn't even realize. Now, remember, there was no YouTube back then when I learned. I learned with a library book. So um, when I finally got the hang of it and I finished the blanket and I looked back at it, I was like, whoo, there was some, but I was able to make it, I was able to fudge it enough and make it look okay. So this is going to be just like my very first crocheted blanket. There's going to be, by the time I'm done with this whole process and it's all done and I look at the final finished object in the top of it and I'll look at it and say, oh, look at all this. And then I'll go back to this little section and go, whew man but practice 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 makes perfect right guys so i hope you'll join me in my little journey with this that was everything i had to talk to you about except for one little thing i've got something to ask you guys now i bought my clover hooks this set the set of 10 sometime last year when i finally discovered them and realized i absolutely love these anyway this is my 5.5 millimeter, what is this, H, eye hook, sorry, 5.5 millimeter eye hook. And the last time I worked with this particular hook, I had noticed something, but I didn't really pay attention to it. But this time it got worse and I'm noticing it. Now it is pulling out of the thing. It like, I don't know if you can see, let me see. Can you see it? Can you hear it too? Listen. So my, it's coming apart or something. I don't know. And like, if it gets like a tight stitch or something, it's pulling and then thunking back. And I don't like it. Has any of your guys' hooks done this? This hook 5.5 millimeter. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't used this all that much this past year. I used my four millimeter a ton. I used my J hook a ton. I use five millimeter all the time. I've used the smaller ones and they do not do this. This one is doing this. Now, my question is, are these warranty? Does anybody know if there's a warranty or is there a way to stop that. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to try to put glue in it or anything. I don't think that's gonna, it's pretty sealed up in there. There's no space to put. And I don't know. Anyway, is anybody else's doing this? Anybody have one that does this? 
do I have to call Clover? Will they actually do anything? Or are they, I'm just going to have to go buy a new one and get rid of this one. Anyway, that was my question. So if you guys know, let me know. Okay, guys. Anyway, that's everything. I think that's everything. So sorry about last week. Hope you can forgive me. You know, I try to be here every week. Things happen sometimes. Um, I was totally naughty last weekend. I actually had a couple of drinks. And so there was no way I was going to get on here after a couple of drinks because I'm nutty enough. Y'all don't need to see me after a couple of drinks. <laughs> you guys are the best. Hey, um, I will be talking to you guys really, really soon. I love you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay creative. And I'll be talking to you guys really, really soon. I love you guys.